Okay, welcome again, folks, to our practitioner track. I'm pleased to announce uh, Stefa Echegarwe Garcia, who is the head of data science of IBM's chief analytics office in New York. She holds a PhD in statistics from Carnegie Mellon University. And Steph has been with IBM since 2014 and starting as a postdoctoral researcher at IBM's research division in the mathematics science department, where she contributed to research programs aimed at developing novel multivariate and hierarchical time series algorithms for forecasting in business applications. In her current role, Stefa leads the technical agenda for the chief analytics office, is a manager to a team of talented data scientists, and is a member of IBM's finance and operations technical leadership council. Stefa is passionate about continuing learning and contributes to programs that help data scientists acquire strategic skills to deliver impact for IBM and for personal growth. Welcome, Stefa. Thank you, Elaine. Um, and welcome, everybody. Um, I'm, I'm Stefa. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, you, know, you can go ahead and use the chat. I will, uh, I will try and have this open. All right. Oops. So um, I'll tell you um, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about because this is a practitioner talk. I'll tell you about my practice, I guess, um, a little bit at the beginning about the chief analytics office. And then I'll go on to give you an example of one um, of one of the products that we you know that we've developed at the CAO, the chief analytics office um, that have that, that you know, uses a forecasting pervasively. So the chief analytics office is is um, is is part of our shared services um, offices. So we sit um, in corporate headquarters and we help run this very complex, very old, a uh, hundred plus year old uh, company. Uh, IBM is a big company. It is difficult to run. Uh, so that is what uh, we we are here for. The chief analytics office is here for. So the way that we operate our operating model is we start off with deep dives. We have IBM executives reach out and say, hey, we need help in something. Um, and we uh, do some quick turnaround analysis that aren't necessarily complex AI pipelines, but more on like, uh, you know, proof of concepts and, 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 and sort of analyt uh, business analytics. Um, um, sort of quick turnaround showcases. Um, if we see that there is potential for a product, right? Uh, we pass it on to our transformational team, which is uh, essentially a team of data scientists, right? Um, that helps uh, build this out, transform this into an AI pipeline and, um, and, and um, integrate later into any of um, the existing IBM um, uh, platforms. Uh, sometimes we also uh, come up with our own uh, ideas on what IBM should be doing to run itself more efficiently. Uh, so we're a team of strategy consultants, data scientists, and cloud engineers. We're fully integrated, and we tackle you know the pro you know big business problems end to end. You know from uh, the concept to understanding what the issue is, um, all the way out until um, deployment. So our practice is split into five key zones because um, helping to run IBM um, is, is again, a complex operation. And so uh, we've decided to, um, to, to organize ourselves in um, you know, creating business value for the different types of, of, um, of activities that, that um, you know, IBM uh, currently runs. So uh, we have, our five key zones create, maximize, empower, optimize, and build. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit about the, the, the different projects in, in each of these. I'll just be very high level here. Uh, so in the create zone, we have, for example, um, around creating um, new client value. We have recommendation systems that integrate, for example, buyer intent data and uh, purchasing patterns of, 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 of customers that um, help us understand 
you know, what their what uh, our clients' current business challenges are in order to predict, um, you know, the the the, the propensity to buy a certain IBM uh, offering in the future, right? So that's our create zone. Uh, also in our create zone, um, sorry, then in our maximize zone where we have, you know, our clients, how do we, you know, keep generating value to our clients? Um, and we have a few solutions there that also use predictive analytics and forecasting. For example, we'll talk a little bit later about um, how we help retain and grow our existing customer base, right? Understanding sort of uh, customer health, right? And customer usage trends um, to take proactive sort of measures to mitigate, you know, risk of uh, a client uh, leaving uh, or, um, or also addressing um, nurture issues, right? Uh, proactively reaching out to customers uh, for opportunity to cross sell or understand um, any, any other um, value generating, uh, you know, possibilities there. As I mentioned, we tackle some of these big pervasive problems across the company, not necessarily tied to a business unit, but more on how IBM runs itself. And uh, pricing is a big thing that every enterprise, um, you know, does, right? And so uh, we also have a pricing tool that helps improve the negotiation process. And um, it, it's obviously a complex optimization problem on, for example, the probability of renewal of some, uh, you know, license um, also balanced or constrained to the different uh, customer attributes or the situation in the market, for example. Um, and IBM sells uh, hardware, software services. So pricing strategies there are all um, you know, different and are tailored and, and our solutions are tailored to the different types of, of businesses. Um, so you can see how forecasting here is, is also a, you know, a big, big, uh, big part of what we do. In, in the empower zone, um, how do we find the right resources, assets, and structure, and, and structure to mitigate some of the risk that IBM is inherently exposed to? Um, so for example, we have projects here um, around uh, exposure to financial and legal risk, right, within IBM. And we do our best to you know, detect, assess, and, and mitigate those, those risks. Um, so we have a big uh, risk team, uh, as well as um, workforce. Uh, so IBM has a big uh, consulting arm um, and the consulting arm, uh, the, the consulting arm is, uh, needs to allocate, uh, you know, resources to the different projects. So it's optimal, uh, you know, optimal, optimal, Optimizing that is also a uh, part of what um, we, we built. Finally, on the optimized zone, um, we have uh, projects around management of, um, of, of, of our current, uh, of, of, of the way that we currently do business, right? Management, our management system. So IBM is a public company. Um, one of the KPIs that IBM tracks on a, on a weekly basis is revenue, right? That gets reported externally to Wall Street at the end of the quarter. There's a big call, you know, much like all of your companies out there, right? Um, so tracking uh, revenue is, is, is um, also a solution that we, um, that we have been developing for, for many years. Forecasting revenue is, uh, is, is something that is, is also very tailored to, to the company, right? Again, there's different types of revenue. Um, you have transactional revenue, and of course, the sales pipeline there is fundamental to sort of guess, you know, what's going on with, with the new business, but um, or to predict what's going on with the new business. But also, we have, um, you know, services type revenue as well as um, more of annuity um, in licensing for a software business. And of course, each of those revenue types deserve, you know, a very specific um, uh, a, a model. So um, finally, there's um, there's a there's oops there's a zone 
called the build zone that doesn't necessarily build uh, solutions for IBM, but it's mainly there to support the chief analytics office um, as, as many as perhaps um, you, you know, your companies might, might have a, a, a support team uh, to help uh, develop CAO's technical capabilities, for example, overseeing uh, CAO's tech stack, as well as um, development tools to, to get all this up and running sort of quickly, right? Uh, we want quick turnaround on, on, on our data science pipelines. So I'll move on now to tell you about one specific use case where, um, forecast, where we use forecasting techniques. I am specifically time series forecasting. So one of the questions that we got from the business was, uh, could we do some automation uh, to better support and enable IBM's public uh, cloud customers? Right. Now, as we started to dig into this question, it wasn't really a question around, can you predict churn, which is the typical question that, we, that, 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 that I've heard at least when, when, um, when, when people want to, to, to have a, a model um, you know, for, for client health or for, for customer health. Um, as we digged a little bit deeper, it wasn't really about churn. It was more about providing early headlights on customers that may be at risk of, of actual churning or, or um, on the other more positive uh, side, um, identifying customers that are ready for potential expansion. Um, our main users for, for, for these types of analytics is, um, our, our, is, is part of our seller body, which are the customer success managers. These are people that own relationships with, with customers. And they are very close to the customer. They are very much in touch with the customer and understand their customer needs. Now, um, customer success managers are also a very, it, it's limited workforce, right? Um, we have about 120,000 customers in for IBM's public cloud. Um, and we certainly do not have 120,000 customer success managers we have a lot less than that. And so for the accounts that do have a customer success manager or, or, or larger accounts, how can we help um, these, these managers uh, prioritize their work, right? Uh, nurture, grow, uh, customers that are in most need of their attention. And for the, cut, and for the accounts that aren't covered by someone, um, by, by, by a manager, can we help um, you know, automatically identify and trigger customized e-nurture campaigns um, for um, to, to track down and potentially attract and, and have a customer perhaps call in and ask a question or, or, um, or, or generate interest. So that's sort of the setting of, of where we're at. So it's not your typical churn model here that, that, um, that are, that are our contacts were, our partners were interested in. So a few guiding principles here, right? Um, to, to learn about customer health and, and growth potential. So the data is inherently hierarchical, right? You have uh, a particular customer, right? And um, that customer may have multiple offerings and, and even that customer may be a, a, you know, um, located in different uh, geographies, et cetera. Right. So when a customer success manager sees, um, you know, usage, for example, usage predictions or usage forecasts for a particular, you know, for one of their clients, um, that whatever that forecast looks like, that needs to have a drill down capability to the specific offerings or to the specific geos or to the specific brands, et cetera. Right. And if we're saying, hey, you know, you're at, at a high level, your customer is going to perform it, or we expect your customer to perform like this, um, you know, when you drill down, that drill down needs to be sort of in line with what you're seeing at, at the top level, right? So one of the key things that, that we, um, you know, that we worry about is, is aggregate consistency. There's um, an, another, another um, big, it, it's not issue, but another big, uh, 
thing that we need to consider, right, is, is the data, right, and the different types of data. Uh, so customer usage, right, if we're tracking customer usage, if we're, if we're looking at usage trends, um, this, this is a, a metric that, that, um, that, that IBM uses, and it's, uh, it's monthly rated usage. It's, it's attached to a dollar number. You can, have, you can have this at a monthly resolution. You can have it at a daily. Now, daily uh, rated usage does not add up to monthly rated usage because the monthly does all these true ups for you know, perks and discounts and, and, and things like that. So it's sort of like an, you get a noisy aggregation uh, to the monthly rated usage at a, at a lower um, resolution. Um, there's also entitlement, right? There's, uh, there's contract information. And if a server gets canceled, for example, um, that is certainly going to provide interesting headlights into what, what might happen with usage in the future, right? Support tickets, support ticket data is, you know, also provides um, some sort of headlights into, into usage. Now, not necessarily in a negative way, perhaps in a positive way, right? If you are constantly contacting IBM support, it means that you are using it. Um, as well as uh, there's the, the, the marketing division has established milestone data and we record data around those milestones. So for example, if you get a, a friendly chat bot on, on, the, on IBM's public cloud site saying, hey, if you, you, know, if you take a look at this, uh, you might get um, you know, free dollars to do this other thing, right? So um, wherever you click, wh whatever you do, may or may not be uh, tied to, to some type of marketing milestone. Uh, another consideration was that our forecast, whatever they may, may turn out to be, and I'll, I'll show you what, what we came up with, um, needed to be integrated into our CRM systems, um, as well as our marketing platforms. So um, anything that is comp you know, highly complex or highly un understandable for a seller or customer success manager was not necessarily a feasible solution there. Of course, continuous integration delivery training with um, online data streaming in was something that, um, that is also a requirement. Um, what did we come up with? Um, on a, on a, and, and this, um, this, this is illustrative. Um, I'll, I'll walk you through sort of the steps and then I'll tell you how we put everything together. So here's an example of, uh, of a customer. This is a toy example. And the problem is to predict customer usage trends a quarter in advance, right? So here we have historical um, usage for a particular customer. Uh, the the task here is, or at least what we were what we were asked to do by our customer success manage, uh, management organization was, you know, please can you give us some sort of prediction of of, of usage, right, of what's going to happen in the future. And we, of course, immediately because of the time dimension associated to this and historic you know, historical data. Um, and, and usage patterns that we saw, we said, okay, let's try and leverage time series forecasting to predict future values. Now, as we start to dig a little bit deeper, right? Uh, and we start to say, well, uh, we would give you the three data points, for example, that we predict for October, November, and December. This is something that you would have, right? You would have predicted usage or forecasted usage um, for your customers. And that sort of didn't necessarily um, work for our customer success managers. Um, it was too much information. It was, you know, not necessarily easy to consume, you know, quickly. Um, and we ran a few studies and what was easy to quickly consume and, 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 and to, to help sort of prioritize what needs to be addressed were trends, right? 
So, and, and by a trend, I mean, it's just the general direction in which usage is changing. And in this case, you could describe it by the slope of a simple linear regression from where your data ends uh, and, and in using the year forecast values to create that trend. So this would be much more helpful, right? Uh, it does involve underlying forecasting, right? Uh, you would you would forecast, but then you would want to, um, you know, sort of think about. Uh, you would need to do another level of of, of thinking about well, what what does that trend look like? So the the easy model that we came up with was um, for this particular customer, right? And this and, and let's think of this as is a particular customer offering combination, okay? This is the usage on a specific cloud offering for customer A. Let's train a model, right? Where, uh, first of all, we have a true sort of trend, right? So we take the last three months of data and we create a label based on the trend, right? That's, that's our truth, right? So in this particular case, we have a customer that, that is declining its usage. Then in the next step, what we do is that we take the historical data on the left-hand side, right? And we make a prediction. And we make a prediction uh, using H equals three, so three steps ahead. And you could pick your favorite model to do this. You could pick an ARMA, you could pick a, you know, something seasonal, you could uh, you know, exponential smoothing, your favorite model, and you forecast, right? Then you train a, classif a classifier, a classification model that predicts the trends based on the forecast volume, right? Um, this this uh, you could do for multiple customer offering combinations. Because you're training a classifier, you could, you could use a methodology that, you know, that's, that scales uh, fairly quickly. Uh, for the forecasting piece for time series, uh, you could do this by, um, you know, in parallel uh, using multi-threading. So it turns out to be, you know, quite uh, efficient, right? Uh, uh, we can talk about efficiencies. We'll talk about efficiencies in, in a bit. So that's how model training would would be, right? For this, uh, for, in this in this particular case. So say that you have a new customer. This is customer B you don't know what their trend is going to look like. So uh, using all your historical data, you forecast usage using your, your, your favorite um, time series forecasting model. And then you, um, in order to, to score, you know, what, the, what, the, um, what the, the label would be for this brand new customer, uh, you just score your, your multi-class classifier and, the, um, the output of that model is probabilities for the three classes, right? Increase, uh, maintain, and, and decline. So systematically, how did we, we build this, right? So I, I just gave you sort of like the simple example of, of how that would work, right? So the reason for that multi-class classifier is is a little bit of a two uh, it, it, it has two flavors to it right it's it's essentially to ensemble right uh, and I'll tell you what we're ensembling it's essentially to ensemble but also to incorporate additional data so um, we have examples as as um, you know on the left hand side here of, of different customers for different offerings and um, essentially we have around 150,000 uh, combinations of, of these, right? So the first step is to forecast, right? Um, for each of these individual customer offering you know, time series, we created a forecast. We didn't only create one forecast, right? We created, we, we, um, we used different models, right? Um, because we cannot possibly look at all the different dynamics, um, we did, sort of like a rough study of, are we seeing seasonality? And here I'm, 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 I'm showing very short time series, but we have longer history. So we have some customers that show seasonality. Um, we have, um, you know, uh, sort of 
short-term memory kind of um, kind of models as well as you know uh, our um, linear um, ARIMA model. So we incorporated all of these into the forecasting bit. So those um, those uh, those time series forecasting methods would be able to capture um, you know client specific dynamics. We also have a series of cross customer um, le learning um, method methods there. Um, some of them are uh, multivariate time series uh, methodology, but uh, uh, we also have regression type uh, using you know, random forest, et cetera, to learn different cross customer uh, learn um, patterns to, to do this forecast, right? So that's the forecasting piece, right? Once we have um, those those forecasts, uh, how do we decide on 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 which one to to um, you know how how do we decide on which one to pick? Well, we don't, right? We put all of them into a multi-class classifier. We let the classifier sort of um, understand the different um, trends there, right? And learn um, what the specific maintain the decline and, 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 and maintain, expand and decline uh, patterns would, um, would be for the specific uh, customer uh, offering uh, combinations. In this second step, in the ensemble step, we also can incorporate time independent features. So in the first step, it was all about using the time dimension. In the second step, it's sort of integrated over time and then um, we could have, for example, um, metrics around, um, you know, a quality of support tickets and, and things like that over a specific period of time. So no need to incorporate any sort of time uh, dependent features here. Could also um, incorporate the, the types of payment plans and, and, and things like that related to the entitlement that don't necessarily change over time. Finally, the output is probabilities for the three classes and annotations, right? Annotations um, are essentially uh, a way to verbalize how the, um, how the prediction was, uh, you know, how we came up with the prediction. I'll skip this one, um, but I'll tell you that our model in its more sophisticated way, um, outperform customer success uh, manager forecast and help facilitate uh, client conversations, right? So for example, if you have um, a particular customer that has an 80% and I'm looking at the right hand uh, panel has an 80% probability to expand its usage, right? This is something that, you know, customer success manager can, can um, quickly, uh, you know, pick up the phone and, 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 and sort of have that conversation. Um, so it helped prioritize, quickly prioritize, right? By looking at these ordered probabilities, right? What are the things that they need to be uh, doing? Um, as well as uh, we were able to trigger automated e-nurture campaigns uh, for the clients that uh, we saw that had a high propensity to, to decline in the, in the following quarter. Um, so, with with that, um, I will wrap up uh, and 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 say thank you to to everyone attending, and I'll take any questions if if there are any.